Hi everyone, before we get to today's episode, I just want to check in and see how everyone is doing. Um, I do hope that this finds you doing well. If you're not doing so well, just need a friend. Um, you are free to email at any time. At, you can email me at Mindset Matters Podcast 1, that's the number 1, at gmail.com. Um, and I also invite you to go look at the interactive website at mindsetmatters1.com. And that's the numeral one, not, uh, it's not spelled out O-N-E. Um, there at the website, you can um, go to the blog and see pictures that go with each of the episodes. You have an opportunity to interact uh, via voicemail. Um, you can leave uh, any message you feel would be uplifting to others or answer the prompt, what gives you hope. And also there's a place to leave your contact information if you would like to be on the newsletter list. Um, so we will get to today's episode on Coco the Gorilla. Join us in this captivating episode as we delve into the remarkable story of Coco, the gorilla who not only shattered the communication barrier, between species, but also touched the hearts of millions with her surprising insights, emotions, and the undeniable bond she shared with her human companions. Get ready for a wild ride through the jungle of language, empathy, and the incredible tale of Coco's extraordinary life. We're going to start with a brief overview about gorillas before we talk about Coco. Gorillas, the most massive among the great apes, possess a strength exceeding that of humans by more than tenfold. Intriguingly, they share 98.3% of their DNA with humans, establishing them as our closest relatives after chimpanzees and bonobos. On a global scale, there exist only two distinct types of gorillas, eastern and western. Remarkably, these two types reside as next-door neighbors, with a mere 560 miles of forest acting as their natural boundary. Further classification reveals four subspecies, eastern lowland gorillas, eastern mountain gorillas, western lowland gorillas, and western cross river gorillas. Gorillas exhibit a highly social nature and form family units referred to as troops. Typically consisting of five to ten members, some troops can surpass 50 individuals. These groups follow a polygamous structure led by an adult male gorilla known as a silverback, who assumes the role of troop leader and mates with the female members. The juvenile gorillas remain within the troop until maturity, after which all males and approximately 60% of females relocate to different troops to prevent inbreeding. The reproductive patterns of gorillas closely resemble those of humans. Females experience a brief fertility window each month. They undergo a gestation period lasting around eight to nine months and typically give birth to a single offspring. The nurturing phase spans multiple years before females become pregnant again. Generally, female gorillas produce only once every four to six years, presenting a challenge for gorilla populations to rebound from declines. Gorillas share a notable similarity with humans in their capacity for emotional experiences. Much like humans, gorillas exhibit a spectrum of emotions, expressing joy through laughter during play and demonstrating grief when mourning the loss of one of their own. Gorilla communication involves a diverse array of vocalizations encompassing grunts, barks, whimpers, whines, and chuckles, as well as more intense sounds like hoots, roars, and screams. Beyond their emotional depth, gorillas showcase high levels of intelligence. Observations have documented their use of various tools, ranging from sticks employed to measure river depths to twigs utilized for scooping up food. Additionally, their resourcefulness extends to constructing bamboo ladders, aiding their young in climbing trees. Because of their foraging behaviors, gorillas contribute significantly to the well-being of forests. Through the consumption of plants and fruits and subsequent movement to new areas, they play a crucial role in seed dispersal as their feces spread seeds promoting the growth of vegetation. 
Their formidable strength is instrumental in breaking apart vegetation, such as banana trees, to access food. This activity not only aids other species in locating food and shelter, but also allows sunlight to penetrate, contributing to the overall health of the forest. The two gorilla species inhabit distinct regions on opposite sides of the Republic of the Congo, with the Congo Basin Forest serving as the geographical divide. Eastern gorillas are distributed across Rwanda, Uganda, and the Republic of the Congo, while Western gorillas are found in Angola, Cameroon, Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, and Nigeria. Both gorilla species make their homes in forests, constructing nests for nightly sleep. These nests are typically located on the ground, although occasionally gorillas may choose to sleep in trees. The mountain subspecies of gorillas prefer higher elevations, typically residing above 1,400 meters, in diverse habitats such as mixed forests, bamboo forests, and subalpine grasslands. Gorillas as a species do not exhibit territorial behavior, and different family groups often coexist in overlapping areas. The International Union for Conservation of Nature has designated both eastern and western gorillas as critically endangered. The population of mature eastern gorillas has dwindled to a mere 2,600 individuals in the wild. These two gorilla species share common challenges, encountering threats such as human activities like agriculture, mining, transportation corridors, and poaching. Additionally, the impact of invasive diseases and the loss of habitat significantly contribute to the decline in their populations. Welcome to Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary lives of ordinary individuals who have overcome immense challenges and emerged as beacons of inspiration. I'm your host, Lisa Sinclair, and today we embark on a remarkable journey into the life of an extraordinary animal. This is episode 20, The Courage to Cross Communication Barriers, the hero heart of Coco the Gorilla. Picture the 4th of July in 1971 at the bustling San Francisco Zoo, where a tiny gorilla named Coco made a grand entrance into the world. Born to Jacqueline and Buana, she marked a milestone as the 50th gorilla born into captivity. What set her apart even more was being one of the rare few embraced by her mother in the captive confines. Coco's early days were filled with maternal warmth until a twist of fate intervened when she fell ill at the tender age of one. Rushed to the zoo's hospital for a battle against a life-threatening illness, Coco's resilience caught the attention of none other than Francine Patterson and Charles Pasternak. This dynamic duo took on the role of caregivers extraordinaire as part of their doctoral research at Stanford University. As Coco fought her health battle, a unique agreement unfolded. The San Francisco Zoo entrusted Patterson and Pasternak with Coco, on the condition that they dedicate a solid four years to her care. Little did they know that this arrangement would evolve into a lifelong journey. The seeds of a deep connection were sown, eventually growing into a partnership supported by the Gorilla Foundation, Patterson's brainchild, designed to champion gorilla research and conservation. So, from a pivotal moment of illness to an enduring collaboration, Coco's journey began, leaving an indelible mark not just in her own life, but in the realms of guerrilla research and the conservation of these incredible beings. Hannah Biko, affectionately known as Coco, emerged into the world on July 4, 1971, at the San Francisco Zoo. However, her story truly unfolded amidst the enchanting landscapes of the Gorilla Foundation's preserve in the scenic Santa Cruz Mountains. The moniker Hanabiko 
a Japanese gem translating to fireworks child, paid homage to the auspicious occasion of her birth on Independence Day. She was selected for a language research project led by Dr. Francine, or known as Penny, Patterson, a researcher at Stanford University. The project aimed to investigate the linguistic capabilities and cognitive abilities of great apes, particularly gorillas. While Coco's captivity raised ethical questions about the treatment of animals in research settings, she became a prominent figure in the field of interspecies communication, breaking ground with her ability to use American Sign Language and fostering a deeper understanding of the cognitive abilities of gorillas. American Sign Language, or ASL, was selected by Dr. Penny Patterson as the primary language to teach Coco because of the success that other researchers had had with chimpanzees. It turned out to be a good choice, as Coco learned it quickly. Within just a few weeks, the gorillas were using sign combinations. Much later, observations by other researchers at zoos revealed that gorillas seemed to have a natural gestural language of their own, using dozens of gestures consistently to communicate with one another. This may explain why Coco learned ASL so quickly. It was built on her intrinsic communication capabilities. Coco, the prodigious gorilla, didn't just stop in a basic sign vocabulary. Her repertoire boasted over 1,000 signs, intricately woven together in ways that mirrored the complexity of human language itself. It was as if she painted a vivid canvas with the strokes of signs, creating a language uniquely her own. In the mesmerizing realm of Coco's communication skills, Francine Patterson unfolded a tapestry of complexity that defied conventional expectations for non-human primates. Picture this. Coco, the linguistic virtuoso, not only wielded signs, but employed them in intricate ways that hinted at a cognitive depth far beyond the norm for her primate counterparts. Patterson's reports revealed Coco's flair for displacement, the ability to discuss objects absent from the immediate scene, an intellectual feat not commonly associated with non-human primates. But it didn't just end with these remarkable feats. Coco delved into the realm of meta-language, using language not just as a tool for communication, but reflexively speaking about language itself. Picture her signing, quote, good sign, end quote, to a fellow gorilla who had adeptly used signing, a profound layer of linguistic sophistication. The intrigue deepens as reports surface of Coco's deceptive language use and the crafting of counterfactual statements for comedic effect, hinting at a nuanced understanding of other minds and a playful sense of humor. According to Patterson's accounts, one striking example stands out, the creation of new signs to convey novel thoughts. In a fascinating revelation, Patterson shared an incident where Coco seemingly conjured up a term independently. Nobody had formally taught her the word for ring yet. Ingeniously, Coco melded the words finger and bracelet to coin a new term, giving birth to the innovative sign finger bracelet when she was referring to what we would call a ring. The question of just how fluent Coco became in the intricate dance of language, as showcased through her adept use of signs, sparks spirited debate, much like other grand experiments involving our primate cousins. Reveling in a linguistic playground, Coco ventured into the realm of nouns, verbs, and adjectives, seamlessly navigating even the abstract territories of, quote, good and fake. She wasn't just a silent observer. Coco flexed her intellectual muscles by posing simple questions. In addition to language, Coco displayed an uncanny ability to bond with other gorillas and animal species, including humans. She displayed favorites such as Mr. Rogers and the late Robin Williams. In a heartwarming twist to Coco's tale, researchers at the Gorilla Foundation shared a charming Christmas wish from the gorilla herself in 1983. 
Coco, it seems, had a feline request on her list. Ron Cohn, a biologist at the Foundation, recounted to the Los Angeles Times that when presented with a lifelike stuffed animal instead of a real cat, Coco expressed her dissatisfaction. The sign she continued to make spelled out a clear, quote, S-A-D, sad, signaling her longing for the real deal. The narrative takes a delightful turn on Coco's birthday in July 1984. Picture this, Coco, with a twinkle in her eye, choosing a kitten from a litter of abandoned fur balls. Among them, she singled out a gray male Manx and bestowed upon him the endearing moniker, All Ball. According to Penny Patterson, the guardian of Coco and the driving force behind the Gorilla Foundation, Coco's maternal instincts kicked in. The bond between gorilla and kitten transcended species boundaries, with Coco treating all ball as if he were her very own baby gorilla. Observers marveled as Coco, with a tender touch, attempted to nurse all ball and showered him with gentle affection. Researchers, enchanted by this interspecies connection, believed that Coco's nurturing instincts, honed through play with dolls and her devoted care for all ball, could potentially be a stepping stone for her to grasp the delicate art of nurturing her own offspring. In this heartening chapter of Coco's story, the line between species blurred as the gorilla and her feline companion embarked on a shared journey of love and companionship. The tale takes a somber turn in December 1984, when All Ball, Coco's cherished feline friend, made an unexpected escape from her enclosure and met a tragic end in a collision with a car. The news hit hard, and when Patterson communicated the heartbreaking loss to Coco through sign language, a poignant exchange unfolded. Coco's signs spoke volumes, expressing a cascade of emotions. She signed, Bad, Sad, Bad. She signed her gestures, painting a vivid canvas of sorrow, with the signs, Frown, cry, frown, sad, trouble. As if echoing the depth of her grief, Patterson later recounted an auditory revelation that pierced the air. Coco, in a haunting semblance to human weeping, emitted a sound that resonated with a sorrowful melody. In this poignant moment of shared sorrow, the boundaries between species blurred, underscoring the profound emotional complexity that Coco, in her unique way, navigated and conveyed. The echoes of All Ball's departure lingered not just in the physical realm, but reverberated through the poignant sounds and signs that marked Coco's response to her loss. In the whimsical year of 1985, Coco, ever the discerning companion seeker, was granted the delightful task of handpicking two new feline friends from a litter. The chosen duo, christened with the endearing names Lips and Smokey, shared not only their Manx heritage, but also a special place in Coco's heart. Picture the moment of selection, with Coco's keen eyes lighting up at the sight of a tiny orange Manx that would soon become called by Coco, Lips. Curiosity naturally arose, and when Coco's trainer inquired about the inspiration behind the name, the response unfolded in a whimsical stroke of linguistic flair. With a gleam in her eyes, Coco linked the moniker Lips to the world of cosmetics, declaring its meaning to be none other than Lips Lipstick. In this charming interplay of selection and nomenclature, Coco, the arbiter of names, added a touch of whimsy to her growing feline family. Adding a touch of avian intrigue to the Gorilla Foundation's eclectic menagerie, a male green-winged macaw with an enigmatic past briefly joined the scene. This vibrant character was no ordinary pet, but rather a feathered wanderer discovered feasting on the loquat trees within the grounds. Despite sharing the same abode, Coco's relationship with this flamboyant parrot didn't quite mirror the intimate bond she held with her fiend-like companions. In her inedible style of naming, Coco bestowed upon this colorful visitor the moniker Devil Tooth. The choice seemed to stem from the parrot's fiery red plumage and an imposing tooth-like white beak. 
However, the human staff, ever the linguistic referees, tweaked the name to the slightly more diplomatic Devil Beak, and eventually settled on the succinct DB. Fast forward to the festivities of Coco's July 2015th birthday bash, where the gift of choice was another feline bundle of joy. Coco, the discerning cat connoisseur, carefully selected two kittens from this litter, christening them with the elegant titles of Miss Black and Miss Gray. In the ever-evolving tale of Coco's animal companions, each character, whether feline or feathered, added a unique chapter to the vibrant narrative of her extraordinary life. Upon the completion of Patterson's groundbreaking research with Coco, the gorilla embarked on a new chapter, finding her haven at a reserve nestled in Woodside, California. Here the tapestry of Coco's life intertwined with another gorilla named Michael, who, like her, had also delved into the realm of sign language. A unique bond flourished until the unfortunate year of 2000, when Michael bid farewell to the world. Born in Africa, Michael, the gorilla, faced the hardships of being an orphan due to the bushmeat trade. At the age of three, he made the journey from the Vienna Zoo to the Gorilla Foundation in the U.S., where he became the companion to Coco at the age of six. His proficiency in American Sign Language, acquired through interaction with Coco and Penny, was impressive, encompassing over 500 signs. Michael's multifaceted personality included being an artist, a music enthusiast, a skilled storyteller, and above all, Coco's closest confidant. An appointment sign language revelation captured on video, Michael shares a deeply unsettling first-hand account of his memories about his mother, shedding light on the grim reality of bushmeat poaching. Yellow was Michael's preferred color, and his top choices for television entertainment included Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers. His auditory pleasures involved listening to Luciano Pavarotti, and he found joy in perusing pictures. Unlike Coco, who painted for amusement, Michael took painting seriously and derived great enjoyment from the artistic process. With some hopes towards this pair breeding, they kept a platonic relationship, best friends until the end. Coco grew to be deep brown, black in color. She had an impressive weight of 280 pounds or 127 kilograms. This exceeded the typical range for a gorilla in the wild, where the scales tip at around 150 to 200 pounds or 70 to 90 kilograms. The foundation, however, swiftly clarified that Coco, much like her mother, embodied a larger frame, offering a glimpse into the unique physicality of this extraordinary gorilla. Amidst the rustling leaves and shared moments with fellow gorillas, Coco's life continued to unfold, leaving an indelible mark on the canvas of gorilla existence. Each chapter brought forth new connections, challenges, and the undeniable allure of a gorilla who in her own right defied expectations and carved her place in the natural tapestry of Woodside's gorilla haven. In the quiet embrace of sleep, Coco, the gorilla luminary, bid farewell to the world on the morning of June 19, 2018, at the Gorilla Foundation Sanctuary in Woodside, California, marking the end of her remarkable journey at the astonishing age of 46 years. The news rippled through the air, and the Gorilla Foundation, in a poignant statement, reflected on the profound impact Coco left behind. Her teachings on the emotional depths of gorillas and the vast expanse of their cognitive abilities, it declared, would echo through time, shaping our understanding of these majestic beings. The Gorilla Foundation said in a statement that it will continue to honor Coco's legacy and advance the mission by studying sign language in great apes and pursuing conservation projects in Africa and elsewhere. Surprisingly, despite her comparative ripe age, Coco's departure caught the dedicated staff members of the Gorilla Foundation off guard, unveiling the depth of the bond they shared with this extraordinary primate. In the quiet aftermath of her passing, the legacy of Coco continued to reverberate, a testament to a life lived with grace and an enduring impact that transcends the boundaries of species. 
Barbara King, a professor emerita of anthropology at the College of William and Mary, highlights Coco's intelligence in comprehending and utilizing aspects of human language. King notes that Coco's abilities showcase the cognitive capabilities shared by all great apes, including reasoning about their environment and forming deep emotional connections. However, King also emphasizes the critical awareness raised by Coco regarding the ethical costs of scientific curiosity about sentient lives. As the author of How Animals Grieve, King underscores the importance of acknowledging that Coco spent her entire life in an unnatural confinement, urging a thoughtful reflection of the impact of such conditions, even as we celebrate her remarkable life. Here's a different viewpoint shared by Francine Patterson in the following audio clip. Are things threatening gorillas? The gorillas only live in Africa. We know that gorillas are probably slated for extinction in Africa if things don't change. They're, ex they're going to be, you know, gone before we know it. Their needs are changing. When I started the project, this wasn't even, you know, a possibility. We are working to create a preserve, a place where if the worst happens, they can be still living in a free living or close to free living natural state in a habitat and environment that meets their needs. We've worked for a number of years, and we're about 50% done in a location on Maui. And right now, because the situation is, seems to intensify, we're reviewing our situation to see if we have the right things going to meet their needs, and we're, we're looking at how we can best do that. So we've got some professional volunteers helping us with this process. We would welcome more people who have skills that, that might be relevant to such a large project and such an important project. Uh, it may be just all they will have left at some point in the future. Togo very much wants a baby. She's open for adoption. She's willing to take a special needs baby gorilla. She is likely to teach her baby. She teaches her baby gorilla doll signs. She has them sign. She uh, has them sign answers to my questions. We'd love to forge a relationship uh, with a zoo that would allow something wonderful like that to take place. I've been working on this a very long time because this is Coco's dearest wish. This is her, um, oh, besides Hawaii, which is another dearest wish. Thank you for helping spread the word. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode about Coco the gorilla. If you would like to read more about her story, there is a book by Francine Patterson called The Education of Coco um, that was written in 1981. And the teacher's pick is called Coco's Kitten, um, part of the Rise and Shine books. And it was written by Dr. Francine Patterson and Ronald Cohen in June 1st of 1987. Our quote of the day comes from Francine Patterson. She says, Uncontaminated by humans, they are definitely closer to living in the now. Our problem is that we live in the past and we live in the future, but we very rarely dwell in the now. They are so much in harmony with nature, we surely could use them as a model. End quote. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. Our next episode will be about Helen Keller. I hope to see you then. Thank you for giving your time to listen to this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. You are of value. You are loved. You are not alone. If you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, help is available. Dial 988 24 hours a day for free confidential support. If you are not in crisis but need support, please feel free to reach out to me at the email mindsetmatterspodcast numeral one at gmail.com. Again, that's all lowercase mindsetmatterspodcast the numeral one at gmail.com. Remember to change your day by what you think and say. We'll see you next time.